Hello and what's up YouTube? I am excited to show you the latest upgrade I made with my homemade powder coating gun. And it is the addition of these nozzles. The same stuff that you'll find being used with some high-end powder coating guns. I bought this set from a local powder coating shop and they are not really expensive. As you can see it comes with three nozzles and different sizes of deflectors. This is the flat jet nozzle and this is the round spray nozzle. Now let's pull this thing apart and see how they work. The deflectors can be easily removed and that o-ring is what's keeping it tightly attached to the shaft. They have this external collar that snugly fit to the base of the nozzle and they are interchangeable so we can easily switch between round and flat nozzle types. Inside there is this shaft that is threaded to the center. Removing the shaft we will see the stainless steel electrode. It is made thin to easily produce the desired corona discharge effect that we want in powder coating. It has been a mystery to me how the center electrode on the nozzle is connected to the high voltage output and today I finally find out how. There is this black plastic cover that at first I thought to be some kind of rubber gasket. It is actually just a cover and prying it out revealed this hole at the base of the nozzle. Now if you look closely, you'll see the other end of the electrode in that hole. The center electrode bends and go to that hole at the side through a bridge in the center. By the way, that bridge at the center has a knife edge facing the flow of air and powder. So that is simply how these nozzles are constructed. You see the thin wire electrode sticking out past the deflector. And here at the base, you see the hole where the connection can be made to the center electrode. The flat spray nozzle is just slightly different. Aside from the end of the collar having the slit, the shaft is just a straight and conical piece. Again, the shaft is threaded so we can remove and swap it easily. And here you can clearly see the other end of the electrode going through the hole at the base of the nozzle. This is my homemade powder coating gun and I already removed the makeshift electrode and deflector. I won't be needing those anymore. Now I just want to quickly go through the power source of the gun because I got some questions from some viewers. This cable is just a USB cable. The reason I use the USB cable is simply because that is what I found kicking around and I don't have to buy it. The cable connects to the adjustable DC power supply to power the gun. There are four wires inside the USB cable. That white and red wire are connected to the positive of the power supply, then goes to the toggle switch to turn the power on and off to the gun. The other two wires of the USB cable connects to the 
black wire that is the negative supply to the cascade. The other thick black wire you see right there is the earth ground connection to the gun frame. The USB cable has this shield outer conductor and, that's, and that is simply connected to the frame of the gun and consequently to the earth ground connection. That is also connected to the outer metal part of the USB plug and that connects to the earth ground of my power supply. I hope you, that makes sense. Now back to installing the upgraded nozzle. I want to maintain the original length of the gun barrel so I need to cut some length out from the muzzle end. The PVC pipe has bigger inner diameter than the nozzle so it does not fit snug. I found this slightly smaller PVC pipe that is size 3 8. This size very closely fit the nozzle so in the future I will replace the tube of the gun with this PVC size. But for now, I just want to see how well this new nozzle works. So I go ahead and cut the end of the gun barrel. I use a file to clean up the edges. And I wrap the end of the nozzle with electrical tape to increase its diameter. So it fits the PVC pipe. This is not the best way to do it but as I said, I just need to quickly make this setup work. With the new nozzle already attached, the next task is to connect the high voltage output to the center electrode. I strip the insulation at the end of the cable to reveal the copper wire. Then I just inserted the wire to the hole at the base of the nozzle. And that should make good electrical contact with the electrode. I verify if there is a good electrical connection between the high voltage output and the electrode using a multimeter continuity tester. And there you go ladies and gentlemen, my homemade powder coating gun is getting closer to look more like a professional gun. Now let's see if it actually works. The first time I turn on the toggle switch, I got these bright fat sparks. The high voltage charge is jumping out of the wire insulation. Now that explains why high voltage cascades needs to be on the actual gun. So that the high voltage does not need to travel through cables. The Eastwood and Harbor Freight guns can get away with coaxial cable because the high voltage output of those low end guns are not really that high. I simply move the high voltage cable away from the metal gun frame so that it does not spark. In the future I will try to replace the high voltage cable with spark plugs, high tension wires. I thought that will work better.
the output powder cloud is now more uniform and consistent. So I, I am very happy with the result. Now for some practical application, these are the parts that I will powder coat. This is the rear rack of my bike and the paint deteriorated over the years. And also I need to cut out this piece and that will expose some more bare metal. The other part I will powder coat is this shifter pedal. I made these welded modifications in the past and the, the spray paint just don't last. I set my adjustable DC power supply to about 4 volts. I hang the rear rack and connect the ground wire to it. With very controlled powder output, there is very little wasted powder over spray. With the oven preheated to 200 degrees centigrade, I put the parts in the oven for curing. I checked the temperature of the part with an IR thermometer and when it reached the desired pure temperature, I then let it in the oven for another 15 minutes to cure. I spray powder to the shifter pedal and cure it in the oven just the same. And here are the finished products already installed on the bike. The parts I powder coated are ready to be installed as soon as they cool down. No waiting time for the paint to dry like when using liquid paint. So I am very satisfied with the end results of my homemade powder coating gun now upgraded with new nozzle. That is all for this video guys. Please look at my other videos about this homemade powder coating gun. And please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment. Thank you very much and God bless you all.